Welcome to the Forum, your way to keep up with state and community leaders, experts, and local business leaders. This is your chance to hear from and talk to people that affect your life right here in Rim Country. You can express your opinions by calling 474-2427. And remember, the comments and opinions of guests and callers are not necessarily the opinions of KMOG. Welcome to Rim Country Forum. Good morning and welcome to the forum. I'm Charlie Serafin. I'm sitting in for Charlie today who's been away on vacation. Um, his his body came back. His mind is probably still somewhere out in the woods. But uh, thank you so much for being here with us again today. I want to thank our sponsors, the Dana Law Group, Banner Health, Payson Medical Center, who we will hear from in just a couple of minutes. Um, Pinnacle Propane, Realty Executives Arizona Territory, the Owens Law Firm, and Sunshine Cleaning and Restoration, all great local sponsors please patronize them and so we are back and it is always a pleasure to say good morning to hoyt scablin from banner pace and medical center Thanks. morning hoyt good morning hey, hey um this new charlie looks a whole lot better looking than the, the old charlie <laughs> but not must likely. have been a, a good two weeks for for charlie yeah not likely but uh but we are back and and uh, had a wonderful trip and when we get to common sense friday which is our friday program every week I'm going to share with you some of my travel adventures. I saw some things while we were uh, out of town that are most unusual. Uh, let's just put it that way. So there's a lot going on. Um, Hoyt is the is the CEO of um, Payson Banner Medical Center, and one of the things that that is still happening in the world, even though we're on the decline, is COVID. So can you give us an update of what's going on here in our community with COVID? Yeah, I, 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 I think it's important to just pause and remember it's 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 with us. Um, this last uh, week uh, to ten days, there's been an uptick again, and 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 uh, amongst the unvaccinated. And where my heart um, aches is when those that are most fr- uh, frail, those that will end up on a ventilator, and those that could lose their life, um, when there's another option that's available. And so we have we have patients in the hospital again um, in larger numbers than we've had in more than eight to 12 weeks. And hopefully it's um, short-lived. And thankfully the, the vaccines remain effective against the new variants. Um, and and we just want that to continue. And the best way to for that to continue is to prevent the spread, which every time COVID spreads, it uh, increases the likelihood of a mutation, and, and eventually that could get to a place where the current vaccines are ineffective. Um, so I just wanted to, to do a shout out for vaccinations. There are uh, many options in town to get vaccinated. If you have questions of, uh, regarding that, we're happy to, to help at the hospital to direct you to, to those um, sites where you could be vaccinated for those who have chosen not to be the, to this point. I certainly respect people's choices, but we want to be sure people are informed accurately. And there's been so much um, hype and controversy relating uh, online and different ways, and I think well-intended people, but I would tell you there is a science, and now the evidence is overwhelmingly positive, and I can't wait till the short-term approval by the FDA is granted and uh, that the, the short-term is made permanent. And that seems to be a concern of some individuals and um, so if we can get that, uh, that, that authentic stamp on that, hopefully that alleviates concern so that we can pr- protect and save lives. Can you tell, based on the, the cases that you're seeing, whether or not the people that are infected are infected with the variant? Is a, does the blood test show that? The, 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 the standard blood tests do not. You can do a send-out um, for that. The state manages that. The CDC um, it, it follows that more. We're not able to tell the patient, from my understanding, which variant they may have. The predominant variant today is what was once called the United Kingdom variant. That's not where it was de- where where it evolved. It's where it was first di- diagnosed. And na- now, uh, so that in Arizona and in the United States is the predominant variant. Where only a few months ago it was a different variant. So it shows how quickly it spreads. Then the, the most concerning new variant is what was discovered in East India, which is more contagious than the United Kingdom variant. And most concerningly, more virulent, more um, it, it sends people to the hospital. It's so it's it's a scarier variant, and um, but thankfully, Moderna, Pfizer, J and J remain vigilant against it. Now you're going to have a guest here in July, 
um, Dr. Marjorie uh, Bessel, who is considered a national expert in in the pandemic. She's Banner's chief clinical officer, and I will be out of town for a wedding, so I won't be able to be with her, but Laura Ryden, our chief nursing officer, will. That's going to be a neat um, opportunity for listeners to hear her. She's a physician. She's an expert. Um, she's from rural roots. And I think you'll find her to be extremely down to earth. You've probably seen her on the television in Arizona news and different things, but passionate about uh, safety and health for patients. So you're, when you're talking with me, you're getting kind of the bottom of the barrel. And, and oh, not really. Yeah, no, well, yeah, no, you know. I, think, I appreciate your humility. So that's, but, uh, I, I appreciate you asking about an update. And I, and I know there are some listeners who um, may be frustrated almost to the point of choosing to be offended to, be, to hear more about vaccination. I, I don't mean to offend. I, j- I just really feel in America, one of the things we want to do is make sure that there's good information and that yeah. that people can, can make a choice as fully informed as possible. Right. One of the other things that's, that's out there, Hoyt, and uh, again, I look forward to speaking with a real uh, medical expert about it, and I'm not trying to put you no, on no. the spot, but there are some drugs that are... Um, have been proven in some clinical studies as prophylactic and or as treatment early symptoms um, as opposed to sending people home and having them get really sick and then have to come back and be hospitalized and there's a there's a a lot of controversy around that as well because they're it's not the it they're not mainstream accepted but there but there are people in the medical community that have said no these are but they they don't fit the economic uh, model that has been associated with with the pandemic. Yeah, I, you know there there are again we've talked about this before, but never has the world been as focused on one thing because it's spread so quickly. It's everywhere. The economic impact has been devastating to many economies, and and has certainly we've all. I had a home project that the price increased by more than a third in two months, you know. So it has people focused. And so with that comes a lot of different developments and research and approaches, and then it overwhelms the systems of, of vetting those. And so I, I know that's one of the concerns that many have is, is is this proven, is this safe, is this right? And those are good questions. I don't. I would never criticize anyone for being careful and asking. To, to the point about those early interventions, one of those that has good science behind it and is broadly um, accepted and insurance companies will pay for. That's one of the late indicators, right? Yeah. Is they won't pay for something that's not going to, to make a difference. Um, we actually administer at the hospital in our infusion center. It's ordered by physicians. Um, I can't pronounce it properly, so I won't even try Bam Limavad. And, and so with that, in, even in the last year, as that was developed and, and launched last fall, it's been refined. It's now administered with another drug that shows much you know, has much uh, better um, impact. Doctor Bessel will be interesting to ask those questions of her because Excellent. she could speak to you and and it's going to be enjoyable i i may try to listen from afar on on the over the internet to go. that interview because she's she's an expert and she can speak definitively and she can actually speak in terms of statistics she's reviewed every page of the prospectuses for each of the the um, vaccines and she's assigned the teams in the academic medical centers that the banner operates uh, to 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 verify the research within ourselves before we, uh, before Banner has advocated any of these vaccines for our staff or for patients. So you you mentioned the the biggest single focus in the world on one thing. Um, wouldn't it be awesome if that was God? <laughs> amen. Uh, uh, that's my focus, and I am so thankful. I would just echo an amen to your prayer. I am so thankful for the rain. You know, I think many of us probably went on bended knee and. And I think about it, and I know God could create moisture right now, snap of the fingers, you know, over this place. But I think He also uses nat- nature, and and so I thought about that as I prayed and prayed that over the Pacific, the clouds would form, and then the number of days that it takes, you know, there were a lot of us praying, and and um, it's kind of a, it was a real faith promoting to when you see those clouds and you started seeing the. I looked at the ten day forecast; it changed. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And it changed. And so three days later, all of a sudden, there's moisture. And I didn't get many drops at my house, but I'm not near the fire. And what, what they said up there on the mountain was that they got rain. And my dad was a forest firefighter. He was the fire information officer for the West Yellowstone National Park fire. And so this is close to my heart. And um, I'm grateful. I, I love the signs people have put at the roundabout. On the way out of town, 
to think in the forest, uh, the firefighters, and it gives me chills even now. Yeah. God be praised. God be praised. Yeah, amen. So you have a couple of guests with us today. Um, tell us who they are, and then I'm gonna then we'll we'll put them through the drill. I, I'm gonna introduce their organization. I don't know them well, but we we met as and we wanted to give our program today to them. Um, it's Arizona Sunshine, and this is a program that's right in America. This is where we look for people in need in our own community, people that we might not even th- consider might be in need. They might be housed. They might have a vehicle. They might have a job. But this program is aware of gaps that they have. And so I would invite the listeners um, to to turn your attention to this next portion of this program for the re- remainder of this program. Ban- Banner Pace Medical Center is proud to, to, to donate, so to speak, and invite them to speak on our behalf about a difference we all can make. And now that there may be listeners who need these services. And so my hope and Banner's hope and, and Arizona Sunshine's hope as a result of today interviewing with Charlie um, that we can increase um, awareness so that those in need can reach out for help and those that may be blessed with a lot or with with more than we need um, where much is given, much is required, maybe we can respond to that and, and feel to give back in a way and um, either by donating your time or maybe even making a financial contribution. So I think you have have the names. As the as the program continues, we'll uh, come back and uh, speak with Daryl Oft and Barbara Hepburn from Arizona Sunshine. That's right after this. It's the Rim Country Forum on KMOG. Charlie Serafin uh, back with you here, back in the saddle again. Uh, if you're listening online, it's KMOGCountry.com. Welcome aboard wherever you may be listening, uh, across the area, across the world, across across the dial, wherever you are. Thanks for being here. We appreciate you. So uh, so we have Daryl and Barbara in studio, and they're with uh, an organization called Arizona Sunshine. And, and they don't know this because they haven't heard this program before, but we're going to start the way we always do. Ladies first, we're going to start with Barbara. And we're going to say, Barbara, where were you born? I was born in San Diego, California, in Navy Hospital. Okay. And uh, how, where else have you lived other than San Diego? Well, until Payson, San Diego. San Diego, and then you came to Payson. How long ago did you come to Payson? 2019, two 2019, years ago. two years ago. Well, welcome aboard. And um, what brought you to Payson? I'm a refugee. Um, we decided that we wanted a place that was just a little more open and uh, definitely more country-like. And so here we are. Yeah, you left the most beautiful climate on the planet. Right. I mean, it's pretty much recognized. San Diego is a wonderful place. Having lived there, I've, I got to experience it as well. But there's something about Payson that's really special. It is. And we ended up here, as, as I, my husband and I say, kind of a God thing. Mm-hmm. We were looking for a home, and we found it. Excellent. Okay, uh, Daryl, how about you? Where were you born? I was born in Kalamazoo, Michigan. Kalamazoo, Michigan. There you mm-hmm. go. And uh, what brought you to this area? I've been in uh, Payson since 1997. I was recruited from uh, the hospital, the local hospital, to come out and set up an occupational health program, and have been here ever since. All right. And uh, what's different about Payson uh, compared to Kalamazoo? Well, Kalamazoo, I left when I was three, so I really don't know much about it. I've I've lived, I grew up in Florida. Okay. Uh, What part? I was in central Florida, small town Avon Park. Okay. And then I was in the military, so I moved around a few times. I've uh, lived in upstate New York, Virginia. Longest time in one place was right here in Arizona, in Payson, Tonto Basin area. Love it and can't imagine going anywhere else. Yeah. Well, what, is the, what is the human quality that draws your uh, people like you to this area? Uh, I think the openness uh, kind of, I remember when I first came and I saw some signs on the electrical transformers, don't fence me in. <laughs> and that, that was kind of like, yeah, don't fence me in. This is a good place not to be fenced in. Yeah. The people are wonderful, too, aren't they? Yeah, they are. They're very friendly. Uh, we have a couple of uh, outsiders that have moved into my neighborhood, and I wave at everybody when I'm uh, driving around, and they haven't waved back yet, but I'm going to wear them down, and eventually they'll <laughs> they'll get the idea that, you know, we're all in this together, so we might as well step up. So um, tell us about Arizona Sunshine. What is it? 
Arizona Sunshine is a faith-based program, and uh, it is sponsored primarily here by the Payson Seventh-day Adventist Church. What we do is we work with the community. This is a community outreach, and everybody can participate. There's something for everybody to do. And the thing for us is that we're serving this community. You don't realize, and one of the things that Hoyt said so beautifully, you don't realize who doesn't have the coverages. You know, the person that lives next door to you may have a nice house, but they may be wearing eyeglasses that are five or six years out of date. The person that does your yard work may need dental work desperately. These people may have some form of insurance, but not enough. So our objective is with the hands and feet provided by volunteers and the finances provided by donors to meet those needs of the underserved and unserved. I had a situation the other day. I was talking to the young lady that was cutting my hair, and she has a friend that has been wearing the same pair of contacts for a year. And I told her about Arizona Sunshine and that she can get, he can get free glasses. And she was amazed. So we would ask the, the public here not only to, to volunteer, but to reach out to their neighbors and tell them about this. Our objective is to serve those who are in need. I just got back from uh, two weeks ago up in uh, Prescott Valley and we served over 400 people and some of the people I work in the vision area Mm -hmm. some of the people we saw had never had an eye exam and these people were in their 50s and 60s there were some people who'd never been to a doctor some people who'd never been to a dentist and they were all so excited that somebody reached out and helped them not just as a group, but them individually. It gives me goosebumps. I, I just, it, it is the most thrilling, the most heartbreaking, and the most exciting thing you can do. And so I would reach out to the community saying, if you want to help, if you want to go and find out more about the program, reach out to www.arizonasunshine, and that's S O N Shine. Dot com, and if you look at the events, you'll see um, the the uh, pace event. Click on that. I'd like to also give a shout out to our sponsors, and one okay. of them, of course, and we really want to thank Banner for the donation of this time. Um, we've got a number of them, and uh, MHA Foundation is also very, very big in the community. They've helped us. Um, We've got uh, the mobile on-site mammogram unit that's going to be coming in on Saturday, and we'll have more information on that because sometimes you can walk in, but if you want to make an uh, appointment in advance, you can. Um, We've got... And there are no fees associated with that? No fees, and that's where our fundraising comes in. It costs somewhere between thirty-nine and fifty thousand dollars to put on an event like this for supplies. We feed the people that are our volunteers as well as the people that are attending, and um, that is that is so cool because you sit down and you have lunch with the people that you are you are helping. It's very busy, very busy. And okay, sometimes. so that the mammogram, the mobile mammogram, when is that coming again? That's coming on Saturday, July 24th, and it will be parked. This whole event is going to take place. I'm 24th, July 24th. Okay. Um, that the whole thing is taking. I don't place. have the calendar in front of me, so I can't I can't uh, resolve that. So, Saturday, July 24th. Yes. Okay. And um, the. Uh, the mammogram unit will be at uh, parked in the parking lot because, of course, you've got the resonance. And, at and where? It's going to be at Julia Randall Elementary School, right across the street from Green Valley Park. It's on Green Valley Parkway. Okay. And, um, oh gosh, there's so much to tell you about. And the other thing that's exciting is, um, and I want to give a shout out to my boss and uh, Betsy Starner is the director I'm the assistant director and I'm here because she's she wasn't able to come because of the fire and uh, so Betsy thank you for all that you've done she's been doing all of the the legwork on the phone Um, Gila County has been 
immensely, immensely valuable to us. One of the things that Hoyt was talking about were immunizations, and they have agreed not only to do antibody testing, but they are also going to be doing um, testing for COVID itself, and then they will be providing the Johnson & Johnson vaccination, which this is the one and done, because we understand that a lot of these people don't have the ability to come back for a second shot. So those that are out that are out and about um, really should consider that, and we're giving the option for them to do that at this event. We're going to have pregnancy testing, STD testing. There'll be diabetes screening. Um, we will be helping people with um, with some uh, diabetes tests. Uh, the, the accoutrements toward that. We're still we're still aggregating everything. So we put on there, we'll have some flyers out and some posters out in the coming week. Uh, but there's so many people that have said, I can do this. We're going to have massage therapists. Uh, we've got, um, oh gosh, so many things. Of course, the eye exams, the glasses after the eye exams. And these are full eye exams. You'll get a prescription and the glasses are done once the glasses are done, um, they're shipped back, and Walmart. Uh, you'll take the glasses to Walmart to have them uh, fitted and, and uh, make sure that they're the right thing. So everybody's reaching out. Um, we've got, and again, Banner Health. Banner Health has done a lot in this. One of the things that they did talk about is they do have case management programs. We'll find out more about that for people who don't have financial means to, to take care of some of the longer term illnesses or more severe ones. Um, we've got one of our guests, uh, Dr. Jay Smith, with um, Global Denture Alliance, wasn't able to be with us this morning. Just things didn't work out. but. Jay Smith uh, with Global Venture Alliance comes out and he does what his faith directs. He provides, just um, for us, at, we provide the cost of the uh, materials, but he does, he donates his time, his equipment, and actually makes dentures there on site for people. We've got a lot of dentists participating. Centerpoint has got two or three dentists that are coming in, as well as hygienists and assistants. Uh, uh, Dr. Derek Sloan, uh, we've been talking to um, Premier, uh, Pace and Premier Dental. There's a lot of people that just say, I understand I can make a difference with my talent. But the thing we have to remember is these people, these professionals need support. And that's that's where our volunteers come in. And those volunteers do everything from hospitality, where they provide water for the people that are waiting in line. Some of the people that wait in line up in, um, in Prescott Valley, every morning when I came in at 6 o'clock, there was a line around the building of people who had camped out overnight. And not knowing their condition, one of the things that our uh, hospitality team did was they took out water. You know, and just find out how people are. They come in through registration. They say, this is where I need to go. And there's there's just, um, it's, it's amazing how well coordinated it is. Once the people come in and we know where they go, they have a medical folder that goes with them. As they leave, after all of these things have been done, somebody prays with them. And they have records that are actually on file so that if they were referred to a physician, another dentist, for follow-up care, the records are there. So it's not it's not a once and over. Not a one and done, yeah. yeah. It's, just, it's, a, a, it's a really, a, what a wonderful caring program. Um, Daryl, how'd you get involved? Well, first off, I would like to say a real thank you to KMOG for having us on and Banner giving us their time, but to Betsy Steiner and to Barb Hepburn, who have combined, probably put in close to a 1,000 hours already just pulling this program together. This has become a full-time event for them starting months ago and pulling everything together. They've done a marvelous job, and 
Uh, without that kind of leadership, this would not happen. Uh, you asked how I became involved in this. Actually, I was part of a group of about 12 people in a small organization that was in five of the southwestern states, including Hawaii, that kind of came up with this concept of providing bridging a gap between municipalities, faith-based organizations, and the needs in the community. And this organization uh, worked for about a year, and we did our pilot program in San Francisco. We did two days uh, in San Francisco at the Armory, and then the third day that we did up there was in Oakland over at the Coliseum. Mm -hmm. Between those two days, we had about 3,500 people attend that received over $5 million worth of medical care. Uh, it was a much larger event than what we have here in Payson, obviously, but we had about 350 to 370 volunteers, and this was the first event that was kicked off. And there was people at that uh, event that were from locally here, uh, our our pastor at that time was Steve Salisbury and he had been there and we came back and his vision was let's do this in Arizona so it started over in Prescott Valley in 2015 they kicked off their first uh, Arizona sunshine in 2015 and it was a huge uh, success there just like it is here, everybody in the community pitched in. The county, uh, county commissioners, the city, the uh, the volunteers, they all came together, and we had an incredible experience. And it became an annual event to where in 2018, we said, we want to do this in Payson. We want to bring this to Payson and have virtually the same type of footprint with the same type of services. So uh, we came to Payson, and the local uh, church put together a small group that went out to the community and shared the vision with the community. To many of the church organizations, to the county, that's a, another one of the um, sponsors. The county has been absolutely huge, Gila County, in, in working with us, as has been the uh, Arizona Community Foundation, who has provided a significant grant to make this happen. Uh, um, in 2019, that was the first, and in 2020 was going to be the second annual. Mm. And I have to tell you, we got up to within one week. We had done all the preparations. All the money was there. We were ready. We had the food bought. Everything was ready to kick off in five days. And we were watching everything with COVID. And five days before the event, we had to pull the plug and say, we just uh, this just can't be done this year. Um, that provided some opportunities, as Barb may talk about, but I will tell you it has even made it more challenging to try to come back through the whole COVID experience and put this event on post-COVID while we're still somewhat in the pandemic. But uh, there's all types of protocols that have been put into place. Uh, this program can be done safely. Uh, there and it will be done safely but the challenges have been getting the volunteers the professionals to feel like yes can we go in and do this and not jeopardize going back to work the volunteers themselves i think barbara's probably been the the volunteers other than the professionals is probably the biggest challenge because we lost momentum from the first year when we were done, everybody was so excited. We had, I think, 168 volunteers. They were so excited. They say, we can't wait to be part of this next year. And then we lost that momentum. So now our challenge is, is to build that momentum back up and to get volunteers to come in and, and fill that. And I'd just like to just quickly ask Barb, Barb, where are we at with volunteers? We need about 150 volunteers for this year. And where are we at? Based on the uh, the anticipated volume, in back in uh, 2019, we served over 350 people. And at that time, we had 168 volunteers. And that was good. Currently, uh, we're reaching out to the community. We've had, and I didn't check this morning, but we've got about 60 volunteers signed up. And that's the hardest part, is getting people to say, yes, I will do this. But I'll tell you, once they've done it, they come back and they go, put me on the list. 
And we've actually had people that have been served at this Arizona Sunshine, that same event, come back the next day and go, please let me help. And the areas I can tell you where we do need help right now is um, security. And that's just people walking among the other people that are waiting to make sure everything's okay. Uh -huh. And uh, people for the hospitality. And those are the people that help distribute meals. They get people from point A to point B. They provide water. Basically, whatever the, the people in line need. And then we also need child care. Um, that's a hard one. And there are some of these different positions that will require a screening um, for security purposes. As you know, anybody ha uh, handling child care needs to be vetted before they can uh, before they can actually work with the children. And we have a very experienced individual who has a lot of credentials who will be heading that up, and that's Heather. That would be people that are uh, perhaps teachers on vacation, um, um, elementary, preschool teachers, that sort of thing, uh, that have already been vetted would kind of save the same time? It would, it would, and I hadn't even thought of that. Um, thank you. The, the, the other ones that would be good are generally church organizations with their youth have been vetted. So any faith-based church organization uh, has probably gone through the state vetting process. So those that work in their youth departments would be more than welcome to, to uh, be part of this. It is it's for the community provided by the community yeah. so so if the pastors themselves are not listening this morning maybe just uh, the people in the congregation that are uh, moved by the program it just sounds really spectacular I mean as you as you lay it out everything from diabetes massage eye exams teeth exams um, uh, dentures um, uh, COVID testing antibody testing all the all the uh, health issues that anybody mammograms you know uh, to to come to one place and not have to worry about uh, am I going to have to trade my medical treatment today for food tomorrow or my rent or something else? Because we know there are always those kinds of trade-offs. And a lot of people make the decision that their health is secondary to something else. Maybe it's the taking care of the kids or, or whatever. Um, it's, it just sounds like a wonderful program. And uh, If you have a question or a comment as you're listening this morning uh, that I've forgotten to ask or that we haven't covered, the number is 474-2427, and as always, we're happy to hear from you with a question or a comment. 474-2427. We'll have more after this. Talk about jumping right in when you come back. Holy moly, <laughs> it's been a lot. 18 minutes before 10 o'clock. What a wonderful program. ArizonaSunshine.com. And the sun is spelled S-O-N. So it's Arizona, S-O-N-S-H-I-N-E. And the event is going to be on Saturday, July 24th at Julia Randall Elementary. And it's uh, it's every, it's, a, it's a kind of soup to nuts uh, health I hate to say fair, but it's, it's because health fairs usually are people standing around passing out brochures and trying to sell you something. This is an actual treatment, but the treatment, uh, uh, we'll talk specifically about uh, the dental. It's somewhat limited. Um, you, you, if, you, if you have a dental problem, you know it. Everybody who has a dental problem knows they have a dental problem. Um, so they can come in and, and what, can they, what can they expect? When they, when they come into the dental line, one of the first things they get is an x-ray. That x-ray allows the dental technicians and the dentists to determine where the area, the triage, needs to be done. Somebody has an aching tooth, they look, oh, that's an abscess, that needs to get pulled. Um, the kinds of things that we do at Arizona Sunshine would be extractions, fillings, we'll be doing teeth cleaning, and then of course for those people who have hit the point where their teeth no longer are serviceable, we also provide dentures. And a thing on tooth extractions, just because of the impact to the body, um, the dentist will only do two teeth at a time. But here's the thing where the coordination comes in. We actually have four 
events this year. First one was in Prescott Valley. The next one will be Payson. The one after that will be in Kingman in September. And the last one will be in Sedona in November. So if there are people who are in the process of getting teeth extracted for dentures, and we've seen this happen a couple of times, they'll go from event to event. In some cases, because of the number of teeth to be extracted, it may take a couple of years, but the process has started and they do have care. Um, the and if they have transportation issues getting from one place to another, there have got to be some good Samaritans among your volunteers that would help them get from... Uh, Payson to the to Kingman and from Kingman or uh, Payson again up to Sedona and wherever they need to go. That's a good question and that's something I will talk with Betsy Starner about and see if we have resources that can address that. I do know right now and we're going to be talking to the Beeline bus people who back in 2019 moved people around Arizona or not Arizona Payson. but around Payson to you get to Julia Randall, and most particularly at the warming center slash homeless shelter. Mm -hmm. um, they would pick people up and they'd have set times. So that's another resource. All right. Let's say good morning. Welcome to the forum. Who's on the line? Hey, good morning. This is John. Hi, John. Hey, look, I've been looking in the news in the, uh, the telephone directory here, and I've been trying to get a hold of Banner Health Clinic, and all the numbers in the phone book are disconnected. Hmm. Yeah, nine two eight four seven two three four seven eight. No answer. Disconnected. Huh. I think there's a four seven four three two zero zero. That used to be a number that was the main number there. I called. I've been trying to get a hold of them for like a week or so, and I called every number in the phone book, and everyone is uh, disconnected. Everyone. Huh. So can. Can you just give me the phone number? <laughs> um, it, 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 why don't you, well, let's see here. I'm going to put you on hold and uh, see if I can get somebody in the other room. But write down that, what is it, 474? 3200. 4, write that one down and hold on to that one. You're gonna, we're going to have you try it. Then I'm going to put you on hold and see if I can get Michelle in the other room if she's listening to uh, pick up and, and give you another working number for... Uh, Pace and Banner, okay? Yeah, I'm looking for a, a general practitioner and some dental work done. Yeah, okay. Um, hold on. We'll see if we can find somebody to help you out. Appreciate your call, John. Okay. Well, it's a different one. I haven't been called for a phone number. I wish I had more at the ready, but I, uh, I don't. But uh, hopefully Michelle will pick up on that and we'll help them out. Charlie, can I uh, can I jump in here for a minute? Absolutely. Just, I think that is. Uh, there's a couple of things I'd like to point out. One is the name Arizona Sunshine, and why why do we spell it S O N Shine? And I think I can best answer that when you are at the event as volunteers, you will be asked over and over and over with people that have tears in their eyes. Why do you do this? Why are you people doing this? This is free. I could have never got this. Why are you doing it? And the, the reason why we're doing this is this is faith-based organizations that are pulling their resources, both time and money together, to follow the example that Jesus, the Son of God, the S-O-N of God, set as an example and so that is the why why the name sunshine spelled s-o-n-s-h-i-n-e uh there's a, a few stories that it's not that hard to figure out folks it really <laughs> isn't right yeah uh, i appreciate that it's a wonderful explanation well there there's you know it's good to have a little history on why we why we have it that way and the other reason is so when people go online they make sure they get the s-o-n shine because if you put s-u-n you're just not gonna you're not gonna get it um i remember in in payson two years ago a lady came up and she had she had gone for dentures and she had a picture taken before and she had a picture taken with gauze in her mouth she had had to have a couple of of uh, teeth removed i believe and after she got her dentures at the end of the day she came with tears in her eyes and she says i haven't smiled in 13 years wow. 
And that's the kind of a story, like Barb had said, is heartbreaking that someone feels that they can't smile because of their self-esteem, because they don't have any teeth. And now they are just beaming, and I can now smile. I know, I don't know if we're having it at, in Payson, but I know over in Prescott, we had uh, a volunteer that came up from Phoenix that did pro, uh, professional photos for people and people would get their photos taken and they would go i haven't had a picture taken of myself for for 10 years it was a free 8 by 10 photo that they could get and they could share with their family so a lot of times what happens with dentists and the the glasses the vision services and the dentures is it so changes people's lives with their self-esteem and their functionality i remember one of the the ladies in vision she had had the same prescription for over a decade she had no money to get other glasses and her prescription was so far off that everything was blurry and it was the best she had and she was able to get her her free uh vision glasses and she says it's like I can see again. So there's real human interest stories with everybody that comes through. It's really important to remember it is first come, first serve. And there are limited services based on the number of volunteers that come at any one day. Two years ago, we had a dentist that had scheduled for both days, morning and afternoon, both days, and the day before, he was in a horrific car accident. So that immediately took out one of our dental chairs for four days. So it's all based on what we have available for the volunteers that are there. Uh, there is something for absolutely everyone to do. You don't have to be a professional in in a particular um, uh, position. There is There are so many areas that you are able to serve and you will be there and sharing the love of Jesus as you're able to connect with people. One of the things that we found is that when you are doing an interview for a person, um, as they're coming in for a service, I, I had one, e one individual that had come up, an older woman, she had her son with her, and she um, needed glasses she hadn't had glasses and uh, while I was talking to her I asked you know how are you doing health wise and she goes well I was doing fine until I had the COVID shot and then I started getting a pain right here in my chest and she indicated right over her heart and I said how long ago did that start well as I as I was talking to her we had a little bit of a waiting line and I said we've got doctors over here in triage why don't you take advantage of the fact that you have to wait and we'll go over and talk to the doctors and as I was talking to her taking her over to the doctors she said you know and I was also having a problem with my left shoulder and my arm went numb and my jaw hurt I'm going thank you God because we got her to the doctors and they gave her a reference to a cardiologist but it's things like that. Yeah, it's not like she was in the early stages of a stroke, right? Yeah. Or a possible well, heart attack. Uh -huh. So it, it's, it's people becoming more aware not only of themselves, but of the people around them. And I'm talking about both the participants and the attendees. If you're a healthcare provider in the Payson area and you're listening to this program, um, and you have any way that you can free yourself up on Saturday, July 24th, uh, they could definitely use your help. If you're a, an individual that has a, a time and an inclination to uh, see the face of Christ and others, the strangers that you meet, this is the primary opportunity. Uh, there's something for everyone. So uh, we're. This is a, just a wonderful program, um, and if you want more information, Arizona Sunshine, S-O-N-S-H-I-N-E dot com. Check it out, and uh, we'll have more after this. We're back on the Rim Country Forum. Charlie Serafin with you. Thanks for listening this morning. It's five minutes until 10 o'clock. We've got uh, five minutes more in the program. John, if you're, if you're still listening out there, I've got another number for you to try uh, for uh, uh, Banner, for Payson Banner Medical Center. It's 928... Oh, crud. Is that right? Yeah. 928-328-8534. 
328-8534. Give that one a try. And if not, I'll, I'll get back to you with another number after the program as well. Um, we're, we're speaking with Daryl and Barbara about Arizona Sunshine, a wonderful event coming to Payson for the second time, but not continuously. It was here in 2019. Um, it's been in other places in Arizona. It started out in, uh, in San Francisco. And it's basically, it's a health treatment day for those people who are in need. Um, whether you need a mammogram, an eye exam, a, a, a blood test, um, um, just a health screening, uh, anything having to do with COVID, um, uh, diabetes, um, gosh, it's just a, it's a it's a wonderful way to to get a checkup. But it's a first come first serve. So if you're going to participate as a as a patient. You need to be at Julia Randall Elementary School as early as you can on Saturday, July 24th. If you're a health care provider and you're interested in the program, please reach out and uh, get a hold of these people at uh, Arizona Sunshine. Volunteer your services. And if you're just an able-bodied adult and you um, have the ability to help, uh, for security or hospitality, uh, they would love to have you. If you're a teacher uh, on vacation for the summer and it's kind of been dragging out, but you want to do something really rewarding for yourself, and I guess, Barbara, you, you know, you touched on it, and those of us that have done this kind of volunteer work before, and, and uh, Daryl as well, um, it's not the time that you give. It's what you get out of it. And, and, and until you do it, people don't realize that they go, oh, man, it sounds like a hassle and i, I got to give up my time and everything. But it's so invigorating to look into the eyes of people that you're serving. And there's so, there's so much more blessing in giving than there is in receiving. And we know that instinctively, and yet we, we sometimes fail to take take advantage of it but this is a wonderful opportunity to volunteer amen to that that's one of the things our lord said it is more blessed to give than to receive to kind of expand on this the event is actually two days it's friday july 23rd and saturday july 24th um, registration where you come in and you sign up for services begins at seven in the morning and that registration lasts until one o'clock in the afternoon or until all of the slots on those allocated resources are filled um, the doors are open until five o'clock so there are some services that are not allocated and that would be anything you could walk into which would be the COVID screening the COVID vaccinations uh, the mammogram uh, we advise people to uh, call them and the numbers there are 480-967-3767 or 800-285-0272 Seven two, and that's the mobile on-site mammogram, and that will be there on Saturday. Um, also, wanted before I before I give a little bit more information on precisely what to do, want to give a shout out to the town of Payson, and particularly Troy Smith, the town manager, Ron Tischler, the chief of police, and Tom Morrissey, our mayor. All of them wholeheartedly have given us support. They've offered us suggestions. And because of their support, this is going to be a successful event. And last but not least, if you go to Arizona Sunshine, S O N Shine dot com, if you go to events and click on Payson, you can actually sign up there to become a volunteer. And there are, um, there are, a lot of banners and flyers and handouts that are going to be hitting the street in the next few, probably the next week. So keep an eye peeled for that. We do have spots. Um, uh, we have some spots on KJPN, which is a Christian radio station, um, and we will we will continue to reach out to the community just to let people know what to do and where to go. Excellent. Uh, yeah, I'd like to also, if you go and sign up, there is a lot of need for the setup that actually happens on Wednesday, I'm uh, sorry, that's Thursday, July 22nd. So if you're willing to work with logistics and help set the event center up, uh, we definitely need able-bodied people that will come in. And those that are actually volunteering will come to an orientation in the afternoon. So you'll get more information about that when you sign up. But uh, kind of keep 
that date on the 22nd also available to help set up the event center. It's a big thing to get it set up. Thank, Thank you, you, folks, for uh, bless you for all the work that you do. And uh, I know it'll be a successful event. It's Arizona Sunshine, S O N S H I N E dot com, Friday, July 23rd, Saturday, July 24th. A great program. Uh, thanks for being here with us. I want to thank our sponsors again the Sunshine Cleaning and Restoration, the Owens Law Firm, Realty Executives Arizona Territory, Pinnacle Propane, Banner Health, Payson Medical Center, and the Dana Law Group. Until tomorrow, Charlie Serafin saying thanks so much for being with us. Have a beautiful day and we'll see you again tomorrow morning at nine o'clock here in the rim country forum on kmog payson where it's 10 o'clock